What's the most expensive thing you've bought that you hardly use? I have a photography degree. As a graduation present to myself, I bought a 1700U Nikon full-frame camera, Nikon D750 if you're interested, to replace my old basic Canon. I never ended up getting a job as a photographer. And now that camera mainly serves as something that comes in handy when I need professional photos of something. But I use it way too little for how expensive and good it is. And that makes me feel bad. Spent around 1.5k on a used early 2000s Les Paul. When COVID hit my teacher stopped doing in-person lessons and only started offering lessons over FaceTime and it didn't feel the same so I stopped doing them. Now I mainly practice once or twice a week off YouTube and tabs during my free time but started falling off to play video games instead. I want to get back into playing but finding the motivation is hard. Probably have a $1.50k plus guitar collection that I seldom play that includes very high-end Gibson and Fenders. I built it up flipping guitars off of Craigslist of people who had to sell quickly. I do it as a hobby and just have an eye for good deals including the first Gibson Les Paul slash model that I've turned down $10,000 that someone offered. I have a guitar cave where I keep them all on stands so it is like an art collection to me. I feel like this counts. Years ago, we came into an unexpected windfall. We were mostly sensible with it. But as my birthday was right around the corner, the angel I was lucky and wise enough to marry couldn't resist surprising me with a very nice 18-year single malt, Glen Morangy. For those of you who know your scotch, I was miserly as fuck with that bottle. I drank the final glass of it on my birthday the following year. If you were offered the kind of physique that would let you win M's, Olympia, would you accept? Why or why not? No. Because it's unhealthy. To win a comp like that you have to take your index down to dangerous levels. As a woman at these levels, living day to day, you'll feel awful and your body will not function nominally. You'll lose periods and have too many side effects to even enjoy the strength of the muscles. You might look shredded. But overall you'll be unhealthy. M's. Olympians don't even look like their competition bodies during training season. They cut an extreme amount for the shows in order to win. No. That is not how I would want my body to look. Even if I didn't have to work for it. I have a friend who does bodybuilding and bodybuilding competitions. She struggles with disordered eating and body dysmorphia. She posts pictures of her fat self. And all I see is my friend before she became obsessed with the gym. That's not the life I want for myself. I am fit and active and strong. But I prefer to give some. Softness in my body. In a heartbeat. After the birth of my first child I have struggled with my weight. 40 years of struggle. If I relax I gain. Quickly. Once I got to 230 pounds. I have to watch everything I eat. I've cut out so many things I love and just to maintain an overweight and not obese BMI I need to do a low fat low carb diet. I have not seen a normal BMI in decades. Of course that figure on a woman my age would be odd. But I would take it in a second. It would mean no more sacrifice. And allow me to just live. What TV show nails the ending in the last episode? Mr. Robot. They made you fucking work for that ending. But the last line was perfectly chosen and said by the perfect person. There was so much emotion and history in that last line. I can't help but sob every time I watch it. Charmed, don't think I saw it listed already. Bringing everyone back. Wrapping up the story and showing us the future was done in a great way. Wish Prue had come back as well but that's another issue lol. The very last scene of Star Trek Voyager when they make it home finally. The last line on the show. Janeway says set a course for home. The good place. I don't know I could ever re-watch it. It was perfect. Deep Space Nine had a great finish. I think Superstore was an underrated show and the ending was one of the best I've seen on TV in years. I'm sad it's over. But genuinely glad it ended when and how it did. Mary Tyler Moore Show. The giant group hug. The funny and unplanned moment when they go to get the tissues and the real emotions of the actors. Gets me every time. New Heart. For those not old enough to remember. This sitcom nailed it harder than any other. Greater than. Bob Newhart wakes up. And the whole show was a dream and Hess laying next to his sitcom wife from his previous show, The Bob Newhart Show. And he starts trying to explain the weird dream he just had by describing all the weird characters and situations in the show Newhart. Less than. Scrubs. Cox openly admitting he actually admires JD to someone. And the final scene of JD walking down the hall with all the former characters both cameo and recurring. Culminating in him seeing his future with Elliot. Then saying goodnight to one last person. The creator of the show Bill Lawrence. Was just an impeccable ending to an impeccable show. When you got with your partner did you feel an instant spark or did it take time for it to feel right? I waited for my now partner to ask me out for a few months and yes I felt sparks immediately. Took about three dates first date was a lot of fun. Second date was when we started getting comfortable and decided to officially date. Third date we decided to dress up and go to a museum and she looked gorgeous and I was like yup if this is happening. It took a few hours. Was in a different country for a week doing university stuff. Went on a date through an app with a local. Made out after two. Five hours. Went to her place after 5 or so hours. Continued to text afterwards and my excitement about a person had never been like that before. So we decided to meet up again and again. Wrote this from her parents' guest room. Define instant. Or first date was a blind date. 
the first list was awkward AF because the couple that set us up was there and Hesse schmuck. Like he had trouble keeping his eyes above the neckline. My wife knew this and came in with a preconception of guilty by association. I wasn't feeling the vibes either. Lucky for both of us after they went off to have couple time, hard for them to get a babysitter due to special needs kid, I was polite enough to all if she wanted to go do something else and she took a chance figuring she had nothing better to do that night. I was sold on her within an hour after that. And I won her heart for good the next day. That was 22 years ago. It was pretty much instant. Something kept drawing me to her even though I thought she was engaged, I kept thinking it was just in my head. When I found out she was single by text it took about 3 more messages, over the course of about 15 minutes, for me to unscramble my brain, enough to switch gears from platonic friendliness to holy shit she's been flirting with me this whole time, ask her out. Been together ever since.